Today we're talking about WordPress backup plugins. I'm going to go over my two favorite WordPress backup plugins that I like to use in 2021. Now, if you're not sure about what is the best way of backing up a WordPress site, then make sure you watch this one right to the end. I'm Alex from Ideaspot. Let's get started. All right, the two plugins we're going to be talking about in this video are Updraft Plus and Backup Guard. These both have really great free versions. The reason I'm focusing on these two, we'll get to that in just a second. So if we actually go to our WordPress repository under plugins and add new and search for the word backup, you'll find that the most popular one is still Updraft Plus. And besides that, um, Backup Guard is actually fairly popular now, so it is catching up to some of these more established ones. We did test a lot of these in my previous video, which I'll link in the description, but I do seem to be using this one and this one the most over the past 12 months. This one is obviously a fantastic free version, has tons of great features. This one was the only free one I could find that would work on a WordPress multi-site. Now, I don't use WordPress multi-site very often. I don't think most of you watching this probably use WordPress multi-site, but for those of you needing a free version that will work on WordPress multi-site, then, then this one will do it. For most plugins, uh, multi-site is a pro feature that you need to pay for. So it's pretty cool that this one does give you that for free. So it doesn't quite give you as many features as Updraft Plus, but it did give me the one thing I needed for that project. So I did use this sometimes and I still use it occasionally. While I'm here, I should also mention Vivid. Vivid is quite good. I'm not going to focus on that in this video because I have found some troubles on very slow web hosts where it will freeze and um, it will fail to do the backup or fail to do the restore. So I don't always recommend that, especially if you're on a slower web host. But um, if you've tested this and it works for you, then that's good. I mean, this is a really great, uh, has heaps of features. You can do backup and migration in the free version. So that's really cool as well. This little one, just called Backup, is actually pretty interesting. I haven't tested it very much, but it does look very promising. I noticed that there was a one gigabyte site limit, which should be fine for most people. I don't think many WordPress sites go over one gigabyte, but just be aware of that one. I did think it felt a little bit, um, a little bit too much advertising in this one, but um, test that one out if you're interested as well. And there's also Jetpack and back WP up. I don't really like either of those. I think they're both aimed at being a freemium model and they really push you towards getting the upgraded version. I think back WP up last time I used it, I couldn't even do a restore without getting the pro version. So I can't really recommend that even though it has tons of installs. Now, I've already got backup guard installed on this test website. And one of the things that I really like about this is when you do a manual backup, you can actually give the backup a custom name, which is really cool. If you're starting to develop a new website or a test website, it's good to be able to save um, as you make progress along the way. Sometimes you make some changes and you want to go back to how it was before and you can just give it a, um, like a test uh, version to custom backup. You can just back up the database or back up the files or back up both, do a full backup. Um, sometimes I just like to back up the database. It's really quick. Um, you can just get the database of a version that you liked uh, to back up and then you could try different versions as you're developing a website and you could flick between versions quite quickly. Um, if you're just backing up the database, that actually only takes a few seconds. So um, as we see now, I just did the backup then and uh, as we were talking, it only took a few f seconds to actually finish. So um, sometimes I'm using Backup Guard, the free version, actually as a development tool rather than a backup program. So um, just saving different versions of a test website and um, flipping between them as I develop the site. And as I said before, was there any backup program that would work on a multi-site? So that was the reason I started using it. And the reason I keep using it is because of that custom naming feature. I thought that's kind of um, neat. And it does have a scheduler as well. Um, you could do a backup every week, one month or one uh, day. So depending on how much you make uh, new content updates, you could just set that uh, to be suitable for your website. And it does have cloud. In the free version, you only get Dropbox. So um, you can use Dropbox. Updraft has a lot more options in this regard. So I think in most cases, um, you might want to use something other than Dropbox and then um, Updraft Plus, even the free version will be able to cover that for you. I think we'll talk a bit more about Updraft now. So this is what Updraft looks like. I've also got this Updraft installed on the test website here as well. So you can do uh, backups anytime you want and you can also um, schedule backups. So we go to settings and we can schedule them to happen uh, every week for example, and retain a certain number of backups. That was something that Backup Guard didn't have, is the ability to just wipe backups older than, say, two versions or three versions. So you don't 
end up bloating your website up with old backups and filling up your uh, disk space. So you'd have to go in, if you were using this, you'd have to go into your backups and just manually delete out the really old ones so you don't run out of disk space. That can be a problem on some places where you don't get much um, in terms of disk storage. So especially if you wanted to back up all the complete uh, files and plugins and things on the site. So keep that in mind. This allows you to retain a certain number of backups. So this will save you disk space if you only want to retain one or two or three copies of the site. It also lets you differentiate between the files and the database. So you could do the database every day and just do the files every month. So um, again, you could really optimize the use of the space on your drive by getting more database backups and less um, file backups. Because most of the time when I when I manage to break my WordPress website, it's usually just a matter of restoring the database and getting things back to how I wanted it um, rather than doing a complete file backup, which can take a long time and can be quite tedious. But like we saw before with Backup Guard, um, a database backup and restore, that only takes a few seconds. So um, you could do that quite a lot more and it wouldn't slow down your site or it doesn't load up too much, doesn't bloat up your website with all um, gigs of data. So um, having lots more database backups is quite handy. So if I was doing it like this, I might say have um, two copies of two months worth of monthly file backups. And for the daily um, database backups, I might even go for like um, 180 and have six months of um, database backups. Or if you're not updating that regularly, so I don't update that regularly, actually, I might make a blog once a week um, and just do say um, 26 half a year's worth of um, database backups. And like we said before, storing a large number of databases is not a big deal. These are usually only a few megabytes, so um, storing a bunch of these is never going to be a big problem. And Backup Guard is pretty cheap, starting at $25 for two websites. You get updates for one year on that one, compared to Updraft, where um, it starts from $70 for the first year, then $42 um, to continue to get updates. So... A little bit more expensive. Neither of them are particularly expensive, but uh, I think we can move on to our conclusions. So with Backup Guard, the free version has automatic scheduling. It's very reliable. I really like using that custom name feature during the um, website development process. So I actually kind of use it more of as a development tool rather than a, um, a backup tool. It does work on multi-site. I think there might be cases where you, you're working on a multi-site, you need to find a free solution. So this is good. And you only get Dropbox in the free version, but uh, the pro version will give you a bunch of other options and obviously no migration in the free version. It's not a big deal. There's plenty of other free migration plugins like All-in-One or Duplicator. Uh, the pro version is quite cheap, like we mentioned earlier. Now to compare with Updraft, Updraft, uh, the free version also has auto scheduling, but it can also automatically delete old versions of the backup. So you only need to keep a certain specific number of backups, which is good. You can sort of set and forget and it won't bloat your whole website up with um, uh, big backup files. So that is pretty cool. I like that feature, even in the free version. So um, it is the most popular version of backups for WordPress and the free version has a bunch of offsite options. So not just Dropbox, you've got Google Drive, Amazon, Updraft, Vault, Rackspace, you can use FTP to put it pretty much anywhere. Um, Dream Objects, OpenStack, Swift, and Rackspace. So lots of options for uh, off-site backups in the free version. So no migration in the free version. Again, I don't think that's a big deal. Um, one annoying little thing is it does separate the backup into five separate files. So you get a zip file with your database, with your plugins, themes, uploads. It's not a big deal. It's just a little bit more clunky when you actually have to use the files. What I mean is here in Updraft, you've got your five parts here. So if you were trying to upload a offsite backup onto the server to restore it, you've got to upload the five files and then do the restore. It's not a big deal, but just takes a little bit longer than using a single file like some other plugins would do. All right, now before we wrap up, sometimes it's better to actually not use a backup plugin. Often you've got backups available on the server side. So check with your host. Most shared hosts will give you a way of backing up your website from its control panel. So check with your host. Also, if you're setting up your own server, for example, I use Plesk on a lot of websites. Plesk has its own server side backup feature. So I'll put a, a Vulture tutorial where I set up Plesk and I show you how to run backups on the server side. Running on the server side can be more resource friendly and faster for your website. So uh, check that one out. 
Also, Updraft, I think that's probably the best plugin-based solution. I'll put up a full uh, tutorial and uh, evaluation for Updraft that I did earlier. I'll pop that up there. Check those videos out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.